Okay, today I'm gonna to take you on an adventure to Oaxaca, and we're gonna to make together one of the seven famous moles from Oaxaca, the easiest one to make. This is a class on how to make the yellow mole. In Oaxaca, yellow mole is typically served with chicken. And I know a lot of people are drawn to chicken breasts, but they're really hard to cook and keep moist. So I'm gonna show you my foolproof way to cook a chicken breast. Another lesson here in all of this, as well as teaching you how to make the yellow mole. So I have chicken breast halves here, just the way you would buy them from the grocery store. They have skin on, they've got the, the breast bone in, and it's got the rib bones in, all of that and we are going to poach them in some water I've got five cups of water here but before I actually put them into the water um, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt to the pan because I really want to cook them in seasoned water so that'll be a light seasoning for that that it's not gonna be heavy seasoning and then I'm gonna drop these guys in here. I have it right now over a sort of medium heat. I'm gonna turn it up because once we hit the boil again with this, I'm going to turn it off and just let them poach gently in that water, that seasoned water that we have there. Now with five cups of water, you should be able to nestle them down. I'm kind of pushing it here because a little bit of it is stuck up outside of the water. Uh, that will be okay for me as long as, as I'm letting it slowly poach in this boiling or this once boiled water, I turn them over every once in a while just to make sure. Now, once this comes to the boil, and I mean a good solid boil, I'm gonna put the top of it on and then I'm gonna set a timer for 25 minutes. But as you can imagine during that time, the temperature is just gonna go down, 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 down. So there's not much chance of overcooking these chicken breasts. Um, now, while that's getting ready to come to a boil there and before we start our timer on it, um, I'm going to talk about roasted vegetables. Now, typically with yellow mole in Oaxaca, um, they will have boiled vegetables with it. And it's a kind of an interesting combination of things that are very classic there. Little tiny potatoes, they would call these papas cambrai in, in Mexico. Um, and they're the very littlest, littlest ones, about one inch in diameter. If you have bigger potatoes, you could, of course, cut them into smaller pieces. But instead of boiling them, as would be traditional there, I'm going to concentrate their flavor by roasting them and actually add flavor to it because they'll get a little bit browned. But each one of these one inch potatoes, I want to cut in half um, so that they'll roast evenly. Now let's talk about the second of the vegetables that is here and that's chayote. So chayote has a fairly thin skin. You can leave it on or you can take the peel off. It's typical in Mexico that people will actually peel it. Um, but I think because of the tenderness of it, why not just leave it on? It'll give you more nutrition. And so you cut it in half that way, okay? So it's kind of got two flat sides on it. So you'll cut it down in the middle and that will expose this seed that is in the middle there. And then I usually just take my, my knife tip go in and remove the seed. Um, down in Louisiana, for those of you that are familiar with the cuisine there, uh, this vegetable the, is called the mirliton, and they actually love this little seed. It's a very delicious seed, and it's crunchy. You could just save it and add it to things, but you'd have to have a lot of seeds to make that work. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this now into about half inch pieces, like that and then cut it crosswise. I'm gonna take that little top piece off because it's got a, still got a little piece of the stem in there and then cut like that. Uh, these little pieces over here, I wanna kind of even them up. I know a lot of people 
I think that seems like a kind of fussy thing to do, but it actually just ensures that the pieces will not only look beautiful, but they will also cook really evenly. Uh, you'll notice while you're, oops, let's look at our, our chicken over here because we don't want this to get away from us. Now I've got a full rolling boil. I'm going to put the top on giving just a little bit of space for uh, steam to come out, turn it off, and then in 25 minutes, we'll take a look at that again. Okay, back to our chayote here, half inch slices across, and you will notice as you are doing this that there is actually a kind of latex-like substance in chayote that will make your hands feel kind of funny. Um, so there we've got all of that. Um, in several occasions, I've had to do cases and cases of chayote. Um, and if you weren't wearing any gloves while you were doing that, you would have your whole hands covered with this drying latex-like substance. Um, and it's hard to get off. It's certainly with a one chayote, you wouldn't even notice it at all. Okay, so the chayote is going to go into the, whoops, I lost a piece of it there, is going to go in with the potatoes and then we're going to season them and give them a little bit of oil, um, about a tablespoon, just enough to coat them. And then I'm going to sprinkle these guys uh, liberally with salt um, and then toss that all around until they're covered. I've lost the second one. It's a funny day I hear. There we've got escaping vegetables. Okay, three pieces apart there. Uh, the green beans are going to be our next addition, but these are going to take much longer than the roasted green beans. If you've never had roasted green beans, I highly recommend that you try that because I think they're just absolutely delicious. Um, you, some people would tell you if you were going to roast or grill green beans that you should blanch them first, but you don't have to do that. We're just going to spread these out on a baking sheet. You can see that I have a silicone mat on here. Uh, you could use a, a piece of parchment paper as well, or nothing at all. It just makes these roast a little more evenly and makes the cleanup way, way easier. I've got my oven set at 425 degrees. I'm going to roast these for 10 minutes first, and then I'm going to add these green beans. So I've taken the tops and the tails off of the green beans, so kind of even them up like that and cut those guys into thirds. Um, that will help them in their roasting, but it will also, um, you'll see in the finished dish how beautiful they look when they're cut like that. Um, there's probably enough oil in this pan that I can just toss them around like that and then give them just a little bit of salt and we'll have these ready. I'll set the timer for 10 minutes, then I'm gonna spread these onto the same baking sheet, and we're gonna roast everything until it's done about 20 minutes more. Okay, these vegetables are ready now. You can see, well, they smell really good. I love the smell of roasted potatoes, but you can see that they've got browned edges on them, and that's exactly what we're looking for. And in that amount of time, uh, you may find that, you, that those green beans are something you haven't had, but they're a little bit shriveled, and I think that just concentrates their sweetness, and it makes them really, really good. So now we're on to the making of the mole base here. Um, it can be made with specialty chilies that you would only find in Oaxaca. I'm not going to really delve into that because you would have to fly to Oaxaca to get the chilies. Um, so I'm going to use what uh, sort of like the standard issue version of it, and that would be these Guajillo chilies uh, for making this. And it doesn't have a lot of chili in it, but of course these chilies are, are very easy to find in any Mexican grocery store, certainly online. Um, so you want to tear them open and drop and, and dump out the seeds. I pull out all of the veins like that because that will make them a little less spicy and this is not a particularly spicy mole. Uh, this mole by the way uh, comes in two versions. The one I'm going to show you today which was the, is with the chicken and the vegetables and the second version it's a very thick and very simple version, and it is used to fill tamales with, and it is used to fill uh, little, imp what they call empanadas, what we might, might call quesadillas, because they are uh, big, 
fat tortilla that is pressed out and cooked on a an earthenware griddle and then filled with this yellow mole and some shreds of chicken and that classic herb which we'll talk about more later the one called uh, yerba santa there most places in mexico would know it as hoja santa okay so we've got these guys now all cleaned up and ready to be toasted. This is a light toasting as compared to like black mole where you really toast the chilies a lot. Um, I want these, these to be in flat pieces. So at this point, as I'm putting them into this skillet, the skillet um, I've got, had heating for a little while here on a medium heat. Um, I wanna tear them into flat pieces because that just makes them easier for me to um, to press down and toast, but we're gonna do a fairly light toast. And because I have had this on a, on a medium heat for some time, the pan is actually hot. So this toasting will go very, very fast. Um, I, you can see here, that this is lightened up considerably. It's turned to a light orange color, um, and that says that it's toasted enough. Got a little bit of darkness on the outside. Um, some of these kind of folded back on themselves, so I wanna press it down so that I can make sure to get both sides of it. But I always look on the inside of these, of these chilies here to see if they are um, if they are toasted in that light color that's in there. I'll just dump it out over here. I've got a couple more pieces to, to go here. Um, now just this one chili here, so tear it into flat pieces. And again, you'll just notice if you look at it right now that these are very dark cranberry red now, but if I press them against the, the um, hot surface, the color lightens up a lot. And that's it. It's just a very simple and light toasting. And those are ready to come out now. Okay, let's talk about the chicken that we have going here. We got our, our chilies now toasted. Um, this, I moved it to the back here. Um, and I, we have let these just poach away, but it's a very, very light poach um, because we've done it on boiling water and then turned that off. And in these good sized chicken breasts, they really won't overcook because they're not on the heat anymore. So I'm gonna slide them off over here and I will um, save the broth because we're gonna use that. This is a sort of typical Mexican broth. Some cooks would add some uh, onions and garlic to it, but broth in Mexico is all about the flavor of the meat, not of the vegetables typically. So I'm going to pour this off. And now we are going to combine in this same skillet the chilies that I toasted. So I'll just throw those guys in here into the same pot I meant. Um, and then we have the uh, some tomato and some tomatillo. So tomato is going to add natural sweetness to it. Tomatillo is going to add natural acidity to it. So I'm just going to cut this guy up into four pieces and add that. We've got our tomatillos here, of course, that have to be taken out of their little husks before we use them. Um, but the nice thing about it is those husks really protect them. So if you keep these in your, your refrigerator, they'll stay for months, really, um, that protecting them and you don't have to worry about them going bad quickly. So I'm cutting these guys up as well. They'll go in there. I've got six cloves of garlic that are already peeled here. And then I've got the spices that are typical for this one. We have cumin, we have black pepper, and we have whole cloves. Um, I always want to put them in there just freshly ground. So I keep this small moncajete here by the stove so that I can put any spices that I'm going to use in there and then just crush it rock against rock because the pestle on this mortar is the same material which is basalt or hard lava rock and we'll just crush all of that together. I know that some of you probably like to toast cumin seeds. You've gotten used to toasting cumin seeds. You could easily do that for this one. It's not really very typical in in Oaxaca to do that, but feel free to do that if you like the flavor of the toasted. And then we'll add that 
over to the same pot. This is our, all the basic ingredients that go into this mole base. And then I'm gonna add a cup full of water. We'll turn that on and I have to turn the right one on. And then uh, we'll let that simmer away for about 15 minutes to soften the chilies and to cook the vegetables through. I think this is about ready. It's been the 15 minutes and that's certainly enough time to soften up the chilies and to soften the vegetables. So I'm going to put those into the blender jar. Those of you that try to do this with a food processor, you'll get some of the way through it. But it, the, these chilies, these guajillo chilies, they have such tough skins that the slower blades of a food processor just won't chop them up very much. So you probably want to choose to do this in a blender. And so I'm going to start it off and then I'm going to run it for a little while until it's as smooth as I can get it. Okay, I have cleaned the pan and filmed it with a little bit of oil. I used olive oil in this case because I like the flavor with this yellow mole. And now I'm straining our puree in here. If you let it go long enough, you probably won't get a whole lot of residual bits of skin from the guajillo chilies here. But you want to hear it sizzle when it hits that hot oil in the bottom of the pan. So you can see here with this one that I have almost nothing left in here. Just a little bit of that chili skin. So I, I like to shake the strainer like that or tap it and then shake it and get everything that I can off. Now, when we're making a lot of red chili sauces, I emphasize to you that you need to cook it down in pretty hot pan with a fair amount of oil until it really gets to the consistency of tomato paste. We're not going to take this, this that far. We have lightly toasted chilies. We've got boiled tomatillos and tomatoes in this. So we want to cook it down for just a little bit until it's noticeably thicker. It will darken just a little bit. Um, and when you get to the end of this mole, I'll tell you, it's one of the most distinctive moles that you can find in Oaxaca. And outside of Oaxaca, hardly anybody ever makes it. So my recommendation to you is to go to Oaxaca and taste it there, either from the street vendors and the great big turnovers they call empanadas that I was talking about before. Um, if you go out to the villages, they're oftentimes doing the almost pre-Columbian like tamales with the yellow mole in them, um, or in the market stalls in the 20 de Noviembre market, um, you can find people making yellow mole every day of the week. Uh, some friends in Oaxaca, they call this their everyday mole. It's like you can put it together in a short amount of time. It's not a hard one to make, um, and its flavor is easygoing, shall we say. It's not um, the showstopper uh, like a uh, black mole, I say. Okay, so I've gotten it cooked down. Come in here and take a look at what happens when I stir in the pot. You can see the whole bottom of the pot and it comes back together sort of slowly. That's all the thickening that I really want to do here. And now I'm ready to add some of this chicken broth. I'm going to take a cup of it out. And then I've got about three and a half cups left of it, which is going to go in here. I'm going to, this is mole that is thickened with masa, the corn masa, either the dehydrated masa harina, which is easy for everyone to find, or fresh masa. You can use either one. Um, but this mole base, now we are going to let just simmer here. Um, for about 20 minutes for the flavors to come together. Then we'll thicken it and we'll add the herbs. So when we're talking about herbs here, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to offer you two different options. And so we have both of them here. And the reason that I need to talk about it now is because one of them is dried and one's fresh. Now this is the classic hoja santa, hierba santa, that goes into the mole amarillo, the yellow mole. 
This is avocado leaves. So for, the, for most of you, it will be harder to get the fresh leaves unless you live at a place where it can easily be grown. Those of you that live in Texas, this grows wild all through Texas. Um, but everybody can get, if you have a good, well-stocked Mexican grocery near where you are, everybody can get the avocado leaves, the dried avocado leaves. So if you're using the dried ones, they would go into this pan now. The fresh things, just like with fresh cilantro, and parsley and things like that we will add at the very end of the cooking so that they maintain their freshness so about 20 minutes on that simmering and we'll be ready to to finish this this simple yellow mole now before we do anything else though we have to talk about these chicken breasts because I'm going to show you how I would clean them here. Um, so the skin can come off because this is boiled chicken skin and it, nobody really likes boiled chicken. I don't care for boiled chicken skin very much. Um, so I'm going to peel that off of these guys and then I'll flip it over so you can see the other side here. This is the sternum or the breastbone. And I'm just going to do all of this with my hands because um, that's the way I think it's easiest to do it. You just run your hand right along that breastbone that's there. And it will connect up here to this large and thick bone that is at the top. That's where the wing was attached. This one that was right at the top here is the wishbone. And, it's, and then you have beautifully cooked, beautifully poached chicken breasts. And they are just going to be rewarmed in the, in the mole. Um, and this is the way I think you will have the absolute most juicy, beautiful uh, chicken breast that you could imagine. So I've got a couple more of these guys to do here. And then we'll meet back when I have the base of the mole or the mole uh, itself finished simmering there. Now, I know this is called yellow mole, but most of you will not think it looks very yellow. It certainly doesn't look, it looks like re rusty red here, a real deep orange color. But our next step is to thicken it with masa and that's gonna lighten its color. It's not gonna make it turn yellow, but in pre-Columbian times, this was part of the yellow shade. Let's just call it that way. Remember we have uh, one cup of the chicken broth left here. I have both the dried masa, which is really easy for everyone to get, the masa arena that you would use for making tortillas after you had reconstituted. I have some fresh masa here. This will make it a little bit more velvety, but this works just fine. So this is to six tablespoons, which I'm going to put into the blender along with that broth. And then we're going to blend this. That won't take very long at all. That's just to kind of bring it all together. So... I'm looking for it to moisten everything that I'm looking at here. So it's all moistened now. Uh, it's really best, even with the masarina, to pour it through a strainer and into this simmering pot here. So in case you have any pieces that didn't get completely completely blended up, you'll catch them. And then I'm going to turn this up to high now and, and whisk it this sort of like you would a cornstarch thickened sauce. You whisk it as it comes to a simmer and you've noticed that it's a little bit lighter in color here. Um, and then we're ready. It's almost to a, back to a boil here. Um, I'm seeing it around the edges coming. But when it comes to a full boil, but not before, I can stop whisking it and turn the temperature down a little bit. My standard thing is that once you add any starch to a sauce, no matter what it is that you're making, you want to heat it real fast, whisking constantly until you get it up to a boil. Then you can reduce the heat, but that quick uh, boiling will thicken it quickly and you don't have lumps and stuff like that in it. So I think we're just about to where we need to be. Yeah, it's coming to a nice simmer now around there. So I'm just going to set this to the side, turn it down a little bit now, and let's talk about this uh, herb hoja santa or hierba santa. Um, the, this I cut the center out of. 
like that because that tends to be really fibrous. And then the rest of it, I'm just going to tear into small pieces. Now, if you've never had the opportunity to have this, uh, let me explain to you what the flavor is like. If you've ever tasted the little frilly tops to a to fennel bulbs, the little green frilly tops. Um, that's a lot what this tastes like. It's not exactly. This is a bit more anisey than that, um, but it's it, it does have a similar kind of flavor. So that is one thing that you could use as a replacement for this. Is you could just put those frilly tops in here. You'd probably want to blend them in because I'm not sure you would want the 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 little pieces that you have with fennel tops. Um, but I'm going to put these leaves in here. That was two of those average size Oja Santa leaves. And just whisk it around and we're going to let those cook in there for just a minute. And then we're going to drop, that's thickened up nicely and all that, we're going to drop these guys back into that simmering mole and let them warm through. You probably have been wondering a while why, why I didn't just use boneless, skinless chicken breast because everybody can get them easily and so forth. It's because of the cooking and the, the, the retention of moisture in the chicken breast itself. Even though I took the bones and the skin off, if I cook it with the bones and the skin, number one, it will protect the flesh of the of that chicken breast and it will they will come out juicier. The other thing about it is that the, the bones and the skin will give that broth so much more flavor. And so your mole amarillo will come out much richer, much more delicious. So I'm gonna let that simmer for a couple more minutes, drop these guys in, and then we're, once they come up to temperature, we're ready to serve. I forgot to salt this. So before I put the chicken breasts in here to warm up, I gave it uh, its normal amount of salt, which is uh, about a teaspoon is what, it's nece what is necessary, but I always encourage you to taste and then salt and then add more salt if you need it. Um, so go a little at a time and get to know the flavor of the salt and how it changes, uh, flavor of the sauce and how it changes when you add salt to it. So this is a dish that is always served with copious amounts of, of sauce. So I'm going to spoon now some of this beautiful yellow mole over it along with the hoja santa, hierba santa leaves that are in here. Now if you had used the avocado leaves, this is a point where you would take them out before you spoon all of this sauce on there. Mexican food is all about the sauces, and the dishes are called by the name of the sauces, not by the, the meat that goes into them necessarily. And so uh, this is a good example of how sauce is king on this. I still have a cup or so of sauce back here um, that you could use or not use. You could use it for another dish. I've warmed up the, the vegetables that we roasted earlier, and those are just going to go over the top. Here, just take some tongs and let them fall over the whole thing. And you have like one of the most traditional Oaxacan dishes that you could make. It's such a beautiful dish, really aromatic. I wish you could smell what I'm smelling right now with the chilies and the Oja Santa. But it's a light chili dish, one that's really delicious, quite an adventure. So I hope you'll go on that adventure with me. <laughs>